and welcome to a Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome to anyone who's found us for the first time. It's no accident that you're here today, friends, so please don't run off quite yet. Please stick around for a bit and let's see what all the Lord has for us today. And welcome back to all you regular listeners. Thank you for coming another day. Thank you for being on this journey with me and thinking about God's Word with me. I love talking about God's Word with you and uh, setting our minds on the things of Him. It is so important. It's so important for us to do it daily. And friends, that old devil will try to distract you. He will tell you you don't have time. He'll tell you that it's not really beneficial for you. Uh, He'll whisper that there are things way more important, uh, but friends, that is not so. We read that man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And he has been so gracious to give us his word. So uh, may we desire to spend time in it. The more that you do that, the more that you'll want to do that. And you'll be reminded of his goodness and his faithfulness, even in and especially in uh, the hardest times and the things that is that are hard for us to understand. Uh, friends, we know that he is sovereign. We know that he sees the big picture and we don't. It's very arrogant and unwise of us to think that we do understand uh, all that is going on. Uh, but we can trust the one who does know and understand all that is going on. And so I want to encourage you uh, in that today. Well, please consider sharing this podcast with your friends, family, neighbors, strangers, just anyone you think may receive a blessing from it. Know that I love to hear from you and know that I continue to pray for you regularly, that the Lord will give you that desire to know him more and that you'll be very intentional about spending time with him each day. Well, our verse for the day for the eighth day of October 2024 comes from the major prophet book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 8, and it reads as follows from the Legacy Standard Bible. But they are altogether senseless and foolish. They are in a discipline of vanities. It is mere wood. What was Jeremiah talking about? Oh, friends, this is such a wonderful, this section, this whole chapter of Jeremiah chapter 10 is such a wonderful, clear reminder of what idols really are. And so I'm excited for us to park here. I'm excited for us to be reminded that our God is the one true living God and that there is none like him and that we should not desire any of these idols or the things that the world goes after. And God gave Jeremiah these words to very clearly lay it out, to show us the foolishness of following the world's idols. And so I'm excited for us to park here today. But first, let's think about where we are in the scripture, what book or letter we're in, who may have written it, what was going on, why was it written. Um, And that will help us to remember, to understand, Um, and then hopefully to be able to apply it to our life and then to share it with others. We are in the Old Testament. The Old Testament begins with the five books of the law, then it moves to Old Testament history, then what to what is known as the wisdom and poetry literature, and then to the prophets. And we have the major prophets and the minor prophets. The major prophets in general were longer books, Um, but there is... There are a couple of the minor prophets that have more chapters than Daniel, who is considered a major prophet. But in general, as a a sweeping generality, um, they tended to be uh, larger. Um, The major prophets are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And then there are 12 minor prophets that close out the Old Testament. The book of Lamentations is stuck right next to Jeremiah in our Old Testament because it's thought that Jeremiah wrote that. And when you read it with Jeremiah, you will see that these are some of those laments that Jeremiah uh, cried out to God, some of those that he wrote. And so that's why it is stuck right there next to um, Jeremiah. We know of of quite a bit about Jeremiah based on what he wrote about himself. 
Um, his book is a very long book, and it was one of the pre-exilic books. And so we've talked about this frequently. When we think about the books of prophecy in the Old Testament, we can think about uh, to whom they were written in the relative time period that they were written. And we know that uh, most of the books of prophecy, more than half that we have in the Old Testament, were written to that southern kingdom of Judah after the after the uh, United Kingdom of Israel had been split. Um, then there was the northern kingdom called Israel and sometimes called Ephraim, and then the southern kingdom of Judah. God would continue his to fulfill his promise and carry out uh, his covenant through that southern kingdom of Judah. Um, but he did send prophets to the northern kingdom as well to try to get them to turn back. Remember that we've talked about that God sent his prophets to uh, really to warn the people, to encourage them, to uh, chastise them, to remind them that if they did not turn back to him, uh, there would be trouble coming. But if they would follow him, if they would return, that he would take care of them. And then in some of the prophets, in the midst of the people's difficulties, he would encourage them that there was something better coming, that he would keep his promise, even though they had been disciplined, uh, that he was faithful. And we talked about that a lot when we have been in Zechariah's book um, about how messianic that is. I mean, how it talks about the Messiah coming. But as I mentioned, some uh, of the book's prophecy would be to that northern kingdom of Israel. Those were Amos and Hosea. One was to Edom. Uh, two were to Nineveh, Nahum and Jonah. And then um, two were during the exile. They were exilic prophets, Ezekiel and Daniel. All the rest were to that southern kingdom of Judah, and then some were before the exile, before they were carried off into Babylon uh, for their disobedience, and then uh, some were during that, as I'm just mentioning, and then some were after. We've talked about those three that were after Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi several times. Um, but Jeremiah's book is right before that Babylonian exile, and he was sent really to warn the people that this was coming, and it, he prophesied through part of that as well to tell them what was happening, and so we read about Jeremiah at the beginning. We I love that we get to read about his call and uh, got that God had set him apart for this purpose. And so if we look in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of Yahweh came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. And it came in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of jo Josiah, king of Judah, until the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the exile of Jerusalem in the fifth month. So this tells us exactly how long Jeremiah was prophesying. It tells us when he was prophesying because you could go back and look about these kings. Josiah, remember, was that young king who became uh, king at eight years of age, and he sought to do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And so he did encourage people to uh, turn back to God, and he had uh, many reforms, although um, many of the people continued to walk in their own ways and to turn away. Um, Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet because he uh, did have the laments. He, he had those lamentations. He would cry out. He wept for his people, uh, both because of their sinfulness and that they had turned away from God and they were missing out on the blessing, and also because of the, uh, the punishment, the discipline that was coming. Although it was because of their disobedience, it was still hard for him to watch. He was uh, put through a lot of difficulties, and that is that is so for the for those who will truly do what the Lord 
will have them to do, there is often much difficulty because the world is against the things of God. But it had to be such an encouragement to Jeremiah, and I wonder if he didn't often go back to what the Lord had first told him in his call uh, and draw strength from that all the way through to know that God was with him even in the difficulties. Listen to when... uh, when uh, the Lord God called Jeremiah what he said in chapter 1 verse 4 it says now the word of Yahweh came to me saying before I formed you in the innermost parts I knew you and before you came out from the womb I set you apart I have given you as a prophet to the nations then I said alas Lord Yahweh behold I do not know how to speak because I am a youth but Yahweh said to me do not say I am a youth because everywhere I send you you shall go and all that I command you you shall speak do not be afraid of them for I am with you to deliver you declares Yahweh I mean that had to be such an encouragement when he was thrown into the stocks when he was thrown into the pit when uh, people just came and against him and uh, did not believe what he said. Um, And then in verse 9, it says, Then Yahweh sent forth his hand and touched my mouth. And Yahweh said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to cause to perish and to pull down, to build and to plant. And so it goes on to talk a little bit more about... uh, what the Lord told him at the beginning. And uh, then I want you to hear this because this sets the tone for much of Jeremiah because he really, he was bringing God's message. He was warning the people, but he also was saying, you know, you have been disobedient. God's punishment is coming. You need to accept it and do exactly what he says, be obedient. And because he was getting ready to tell them that the Babylonians were going to come in and carry them off. And, you know, our human wisdom would be fight. Don't go with the Babylonians. But Jeremiah was telling them, no, this is part of God's plan. You need to go with him. Do what he says. (laughs) And so um, he he talks to them about that. It says in chapter 2, verse 1, now the word of Yahweh came to me saying, Um, Go and call out in the ears of Jerusalem. Thus says Yahweh, I remember concerning your loving kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothals, your walking after me in the wilderness through, through a land not sown. Israel was not holy to Yahweh, the first of his produce. All who ate of it became guilty. Evil came upon them, declares Yahweh. Um, and he goes on to bring up what the fathers had done and what the priest had done and all that they had been through and um, talks about how they had turned to idols and they had been faithless and just had not followed him. And he, he can, the Lord God continues to call them to turn back. Um, and then he says that there would be difficulties, uh, but he had seen that Jerusalem continued to refuse to repent. And because of that, because of their sinfulness, the God's goodness had been withheld from them and that he was going to discipline them. And so um, I want you to hear as we get over to um, chapter 10, um, God's reminder to or God's words to Jeremiah to give to the people concerning the idols. One of the biggest things that they would do, uh, they would go after the idols of the nations and the ways that the nations did things. And God had warned them about this all the way back in the um, in the law, in the uh, Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a graven image. I mean, he had told them this was a long standing uh, statute that was given to them in the wilderness when the Lord brought them out, at, out of their slavery from Egypt, when he had shown his power and his strength and his might and did exactly what he had told Abraham that he would do 400 years before it happened. He uh, had shown them over and over and over again throughout their history. Uh, but that those two things, you shall have no other gods before me and you shall not make for yourself um, a graven image, um, had been at the top of the list for a long time. 
So these people should have known that. Uh, But in chapter 10, um, he goes again and reminds them again. So I want you to hear this as we get into our verse for the day. It says in chapter 10, verse 1, and then we'll read forward to our verse for the day. It says, Hear the word which Yahweh speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says Yahweh, Do not learn the way of the nations, and do not be terrified by the signs of the heavens, although the nations are terrified by them. For the statutes of the peoples are vanity, because it is wood cut from the forest, the work of the hands of a craftsman with a cutting tool. Now, when they're talking about, when he's talking about statutes, I do think that he means um, not little statues, uh, but the way that the nations did things, the way that they would have idols and graven images and that they would uh, worship these false gods and worship uh as Paul describes it, the created ones and not the creator. And so that that was how all of those ungodly nations, that was the way of the nations, you know, because we are created to worship. We're created to worship the one true living God. But that old deceiver, the devil, comes in and um, encourages people to worship the wrong, uh, the wrong thing in the false gods and the untrue gods but that's what they're talking about here so picking back up in chapter 10 verse 4 it says they make it beautiful with silver and gold they strengthen it with nails and with hammers so that it will not totter and and think about this get this picture in your mind that he's talking about these idols that are being crafted by materials uh, crafted by the hand of someone it says like a scarecrow in a cucumber field are they they cannot speak they must be carried because they cannot take a step Do not fear them, for they can do no harm, nor can they do any good. There is none like you, O Yahweh. You are great, and great is your name and might. Who would not fear you, O King of the nations? Indeed, it is your due, for among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is none like you. And then here's our verse. But they, talking about these false gods, They are altogether senseless and foolish. They are in a discipline of vanities. It is mere wood. I'm going to read right past it. Beaten silver is brought up from Tarshish and gold from Euphaz, the work of a craftsman and of the hands of a goldsmith. Blue and purple are their clothing. They are all the work of wise craftsmen. But Yahweh is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. At his wrath, the earth quakes and the nations cannot endure his indignation. I love this. It is a reality check about the one true living God versus these idols that are man-made uh, that have that can do nothing. They have no power to do harm or good. They uh, can't walk on their own. They have to be carried. They can't do anything. And so why would we want to go after those things? And it's not as far as uh, for us to think about today. There are lots of people who have these, uh, who go after these false gods and idols. We see that with many of the uh, religions in the world um, and Uh, They just mean nothing. They can do nothing for anyone. But we have the one true living God who does hear, who does see, who does know, who created everything. And it's just such an important reminder. Um, But I love how he goes step by step through here. And then in our verse, these idols are altogether senseless and foolish they have no sense. They can do nothing. They are not wise. It's just it's just foolishness. They are a discipline of vanities. And so um, as you look that up in the Hebrew, it's a doctrine of worthlessness or a doctrine of vanities. In other words, following after those, that discipline, that plan to do that, is just useless. Remember how the um, how King Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes talked about how um, 
all was vanity um, and that meant that it was just uh, it passed away quickly it was but a breath it was but a vapor it really didn't it had nothing long standing except for the things of God that's what stands because God is the one true living God. And then he reminds them, you know, the, this this discipline, this doctrine that people follow, the, pe- the, the nations follow, it's just wood. Wood can burn up. Wood can be destroyed. But God's kingdom and the things of him are everlasting. They can never be destroyed. I love also what the psalmist wrote along these same lines. Um, it's just such a wonderful reminder. If we hop over to Psalm, I believe it's 115. Let me hop over there real fast and read this to you. It says in Psalm 115, verse 1, Not to us, O Yahweh, not to us, but to your name give glory because of your loving kindness, because of your truth. Why should the nation say, Where now is their God? But our God is in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of man's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. They have eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. They have noses, but they do not smell. As for their hands, they do not feel. As for their feet, they do not walk. They do not make a sound with their throat. Those who make them will become like them, everyone who trusts in them. O Israel, trust in Yahweh. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in Yahweh. He is their help and their shield. You who fear Yahweh, trust in Yahweh. He is their help and their shield. Yahweh Yahweh remembered us. He will bless. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear Yahweh, the small together with the great. I just love that reminder. You know, friends, it it seems very straightforward. And many of us might um, say, oh, well, I don't. I don't bow down to idols. I don't follow, I don't have little graven images, so I'm I'm good. But there are other things that are idols for us in this world today, friends. Money, power, prestige, um, and we must be careful. The things of the flesh, the things of this world, anything that does not keep our hearts and minds stayed on him can become an idol. And that old devil, in the way that he works, will work very hard to distract and to try to get you to keep your mind off of the Lord and off of the things of him. But may we keep our hearts and minds stayed on him and walk by the spirit, not by the flesh, um, because it it's the only way that we can be right with him is to trust him completely, to have faith in him, to believe him, to follow him. And he warns very clear, clearly throughout his scriptures about um, following anyone or anything that is not him. And when I say him, I'm talking about uh, God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the uh, one true living God, three persons. And uh, he has been so gracious, so gracious to make a way for us to come back to him, even when at times we have gone after the wrong things. Um, But through what he has done uh, by sending Jesus to this earth to die for us, to uh, pay that that penalty that we owed for our sins against a holy God, he's made a way for us to be restored and to be made right with him. And so can we just give him thanks and praise? Can we keep our hearts and minds stayed on him? Can we love the Lord our God with all our hearts, soul, mind, and strength, and not go after the things of the earth? of the world, which are just temporary and passing away, um, and be reminded that those things really have no power. The world will tell you that they do, but friends, they don't. That's a lie. And so um, may we look after uh, and look just for 
him and his things. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. All the good things, all the things of God, all the things that he knows are best. Uh, may we not go after those things of the, of the world. May we seek the things of him. Blessings to you. Until next time.